Okay, so I've got the first prototype flashlight set up using the SGR Looper uh, version 3 schematic. Since posting that last video, I've had a lot of requests for the schematic. I've been terribly busy, folks. The power has gone down around here. Um, we've had a lot of flooding, just a lot of chaos, but uh, I did get the schematic drawn up, so check out the video description, laserhacker.com, for the schematic. I've continued to approve on the design. This is the latest. It's a smaller pot core. It's got Litz wire which just seems to work excellent for whatever reason in this particular circuit. I've got some 3D printed parts. There's a magnet that slides up and down the pipe here. Comes to a rectifier which charges the capacitor. This is an electrolytic capacitor, so it charges very quickly in comparison to a super cap or a battery. Um, how quickly? Check this out. Here's one shake and the light's on and running. And you know, you could just read by that light at this point, but it charges up a whole lot brighter. So if I give it, let's just go here for this 1000, 2000. So I don't know, two th seconds of charging, we've now got some usable light. And let me turn the uh, light off to show you what I am talking about here. So lights off, and you can see this is nice usable light, folks. And uh, say hi to my parrots. Hey, guys. They're being kept up late, but uh, yeah, anyway, nice usable light. Let's go over here to the, uh, the table, and you can see that you could easily uh, use this light when you're out camping, if you need to read, etc. So anyway, I am really, really happy. So this first prototype has turned out to work far better than I was imagining it was even going to work. So... Now, now, again, if I had three LEDs in it instead of one, I think the performance would be a, even a whole lot better. But again, this is the first prototype. I'm going to do a lot of improvements on this design as I have time over the next couple months. So I'm going to try one with a hand crank. I found some hand cranks, a guy selling on eBay out in Oregon. They're about seven bucks a piece. And he says they, they're 12 volt at 300 milliamps, which would charge this electrolyte capacitor basically instantly. And then you get a nice long amount of runtime. So one other thing I should point out, when you're running this flashlight, you saw I charged it for like two seconds initially. As you shake it at a certain point, and because of this uh, capacitor technology, you, you reach this full charge point almost instantly. So I'm going to go ahead and shake this and show you what I mean. You'll feel no resistance on the magnet as soon as it's fully charged. So... You can see that's a little brighter, but this thing is pretty much charged at this point. You know, I could shake this a whole lot more, and I'm not going to really increase the light intensity. And the light, the um, magnet, has no resistance, basically, as I slide it up and down at this point. So this is full charge point, and uh, it can be reached in, I guess, I, I don't know, three seconds. <laughs> so very, very interesting. So let me set this down, and I'm going to run turn back on the light. And I'll explain a few more things about it. All right. So yeah, check out laserhacker.com for the schematic. Um, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm going to get the 3D printed files for this put up so that we can uh, replicate this very easily for anybody who's interested in creating a almost instant charged uh, flashlight, capacitor based flashlight. So anyway, let me uh, just go over a couple more things here that I've noticed. I am experimenting now with driving these SGR looper circuits at a higher voltage. And that's so that I can put my scope across the cap, the DC voltage of the cap, and actually see what's going on with the circuit. So my experiments right now are dealing with basically putting my scope across the cap and watching uh, Basically what happens when the uh, circuit takes power from the capacitor, you can see the dip in voltage, and then the rebounding voltage from the, the ringing effect. It's very, very interesting. You can see on the new schematic there's a, a uh, pot that you can tune, and whether you, you use that resistor or not is not crucial. You can actually run it with no resistor at that point, but for tuning it, you can tune it with a resistor there or a resistor-capacitor combination. And depending on how you tune, uh, you can really get this thing running in a mode where it drops very negligibly on the voltage. In fact, you'll completely lose patience waiting for it to stop, especially at the higher voltages. So I had a, um, to give you an idea, with a 50 volt, 10,000 microfarad capacitor, um, it may drop rapidly between, say, 50 and 42 volts. And then at 42 volts, it may hold for an incredibly long time. 
you know, just over minutes, barely dropping, you know, millivolt at a time or whatever. And then it'll hit another range and frequency where it'll drop down faster, and then it may hold again at 32 volts. It's very, very interesting behavior. Uh, I did a long test in which I had a 150 volt, 13,000 microfarad capacitor. It's a really old, you know, big can capacitor. I put it at 70 volts, um, got the circuit running, disconnected from the power supply, left it overnight. It was driving three LEDs. You could read by the LEDs. Came back the next morning and it was down at like 63 volts after sitting all night. Um, so anyway, very, very fascinating. I'm by no means finished on my experimentation with this particular circuit. But uh, anyway, definitely fun stuff. Let me just go ahead and do one last thing here. I will discharge this. So it's discharged and just show you the, uh, the amount of light for each uh, shake on the circuit. So we'll go ahead over here, turn this light off for this demonstration. All right, so here's one shake and we've got light. And again, it's light that you can see with. You could read with it. It's not, not a lot with a single shake. Now here we go, the next shake. So there's two shakes. Now we're getting up there. We'll go to three shakes. Now we're really getting up there. We can shine around the uh, room. And four shakes, it's maybe a little brighter. Five, you start to not really notice that much of a difference after say five shakes. So anyway, that's the idea folks. It's a uh, good usable light. I've taken it outside. I've used it down the shop. Um, down the shop, if I have like some paper hanging on the wall about 25 feet away and set the flashlight down, I can go over and, and just make out and read it at that distance. So I don't know if that gives you some sort of an idea, but you know, if you need to come check, like here's my hot water heater, definitely functional for stuff like that. So even this first uh, prototype has a fair amount of functionality. So anyway, that's it folks. Let's, uh, let's all keep experimenting and sharing the results. It's fun stuff and you never know what can come from it. So anyway, talk later.